Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Graphic Jam. I'm Sarah Hunter, editor of the Books for Youth and Graphic Novel sections at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. Our audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you might have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we will pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Links to today's slides and title lists were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download these materials at any time by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. Today we have the pleasure of hearing from Emily Bodica, Director of Publisher Relations and Trade Marketing at Diamond Book Distributors, Chloe Ramos, Book Market and Library Sales Manager at Image Comics, Sarah Anderson, Director of Publishing Sales at Viz Media, Michelle Starrett, Digital Marketing Associate at IDW Publishing, and Lee Walton, Marketing Director and Editor of Top Shelf Productions, an imprint of IDW Publishing. First, we'll hear from Emily Bodica. Emily is the Director of Publisher Relations and Trade Marketing with Diamond Book Distributors. She is a book industry veteran and has been with Diamond for over 12 years. She lives in Michigan with her husband and two cats, Chuck and Larry. Welcome, Emily. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, next slide, please. There we go. Um, thanks for joining us today. My name is Emily Bodica. I'm with Diamond Book Distributors. Um, I'd like to show you what we have coming out next spring with a little preview of some summer titles that I'm excited about. Um, but first I wanna highlight some key fall titles that you may have missed. Next. My first title is Sacred Band. Um, I, I have to say it's not a graphic novel, it's a prose novel, but I'm showing it today because I think it fits with today's theme and I'm really excited about it, so I wanted to tell you about it. Um, Sacred Band is an own voices title that follows a team of queer superheroes who are given their abilities, like all other superpowered individuals, during a random echoing event that occurred around the world. After several young queer kids are taken by another group of superpowered beings and sent to the Ukraine, this group of superheroes band together to save them. Sacred Band will continue with sequel coming this uh, summer 2021 and we'll have a tie-in uh, tie material in an upcoming role-playing game, Mutants and Masterminds, also by Green Ronin. This will appeal to fans of Hero uh, by Little Brown and is intended for teens ages 13 and up. Next. Beyond Kuiper is also not a graphic novel, but it is an illustrated novel. Uh, so I thought it would be fitting. Um, it's a hard science fiction Star Trek-like novel about the Galactic Star Alliance encompassing hundreds of thousands of sentient worlds intermingling among each other, not including Earth. That is until a catastrophic incident destroys Outer Limits, a company of space exploration leaving only one conclusion, it had to be aliens. Next. Co-written by Matthew Medney, CEO of Heavy Metal Magazine, and John Connolly, an aerospace engineer at Lockheed Martin. All science is accurate and the theoretical science is backed up by science theory. This novel includes 35 full color painted pieces of art that will appeal to fans of Contact and, and Interstellar and is intended for older teens ages 16 and up. Next. Manga Classics has come to Manga Classics. Uh, excuse me, Manga Classics Frankenstein has come to Manga Classics. Um, as you know, Manga Classics changes the way you read and experience the classics. Obsessed with natural philosophy, philosophy, the young Victor Frankenstein succeeds in creating life from its basic elements and abandons the newborn monstrosity and terror when he cannot bear to look at it. This edition, like all other manga classics, faithfully adapts the original story, keeping it 100% truthful to the author's vision. Next. 
Frankenstein comes in two formats, trade paper and paper overboard hardcover, and is appropriate for teens ages 13 and up. Next. Avery is a near future YA coming of age story where social media status determines real world status. Avery is a typical high schooler living in the near future where social media status has real world consequences. The app ranked determines everyone's status, not just online, but in real life, who you can hang out with, what places you have access to, what schools you can get into and what jobs you can get. And pretty kitty, the virtual pop star is the spokesperson for it all. Next. Avery's rank is just high enough for an enjoyable life, unlike her best friend Zoe, who has no rank at all. Avery is able to eat lunch where she chooses and to have a boyfriend with a high rank. That is until one day her rank mysteriously drops all the way down to zero. With nothing to lose, Avery and Zoe hatch a plan to kidnap Pretty Kitty and hold her ransom. They embark on a quest that takes them to the corporate underbelly of ranked and discover how the technology was originally developed with good intentions, but was twisted in order to fuel corporate greed and control people's lives. Eerily similar to today's social media dilemma, this will appeal to fans of Giant Days, Snot Girl, and Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and is intended for teens ages 13 and up. Next. Wallach is a middle grade graphic novel that tells the story of Wallach and Eskimo, two inseparable polar bears. Wallach is very young and Eskimo is very old, but between the two, they find a way to survive in an extremely hostile environment. Next. When climate change forces them to travel further north in search of better hunting, they set off on a great journey that neither are truly prepared for. This heartwarming, funny adventure spotlights the impact of climate change and mankind moving into wildlands, forcing nature to search new ground in order to survive. This will appeal to fans of Love the Tiger and is intended for middle grade readers ages nine and up. Next. Miranda in the Maelstrom, Volume 1, is a sweet new science fiction series that centers on Miranda, a third-eyed dimension-skipping heroine utterly devoted to her shark dog, Noodles. A supernatural storm crosses over between dimensions, displacing beings and objects from alternate realities and interdimensional explorers Miranda and Noodles get caught up in the storm, separating them. Miranda and Noodles must find their way back to each other or risk ending up alone for eternity. Next. Cleverly, the writer Riley Beale teamed up with multiple artists as each chapter focuses on a different dimension, individualizing each dimension with a different art style. This will appeal to fans of Diana, Princess of the Amazons and Unbeatable Squirrel Girl and is intended for readers age 10 and up. Next. Nancy Drew, the death, Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys, The Death of Nancy Drew. After taking down a major crime syndicate, Nancy Drew has died. And now it's up to the Hardy Boys to solve her murder. Filled with many twists and turns, the death of Nancy Drew takes the boys in a stunningly unexpected direction. Um, quick note here, um, this was supposed to come out in the fall, but it has been bumped to the spring, which is why I'm bringing it up again today. Um, next. Created by Ringo Award, winning, Award winner Anthony Del Cole, who brought us Kill Shakespeare, with art by Joe Eisma, who brought us Riverdale, this gritty and stylish teen noir will appeal to fans of Riverdale and Sabrina the Teenage Witch and is intended for teens ages 13 and up. Next. Grimstown Terror Tales, Rise of the Candy Creeper. Rise of the Candy Creeper is a modern day twist on the tale of Hansel and Gretel, who must face off against the nefarious Hildega Vontrix, a devious witch that commands a legion of ghouls, ghosts, and goblins. After Hansel and Gretel come home to find their parents are missing, they soon learn their, of their secret. Their parents are leading a double life. Suburban parents by day, heroic monster hunters by night, a family tradition dating back centuries. Next. Hansel and Gretel must pick up where their parents left off to become the new protectors of Grimstown. 
they must embark on a heroic mission to find their missing parents. Rise of the Candy Creeper combines the suspenseful intrigue of Stranger Things with the zaniness of Goosebumps and is intended for middle grade readers ages 9 to 12. Next. Uh, Bite-sized. When, when two young siblings excitedly unwrap their final Christmas presents, they discover toy robots unlike anything they have ever seen before, and with good reason. Next. What the kids and their parents don't know is that their quaint suburban home just became the beachhead of these self-aware bots that have begun to explore the outside world. And when one of the bots breaks bad, it's going to take a Christmas miracle to stop him. Bite-sized is Transformers meets Toy Story and is intended for middle grade readers ages 9 to 12. Next. And last but not least, I'm actually really excited about this. Um, I think it's a, a very special book and I'm really happy to, to sh tell you guys about it today. Um, Embodied. Embodied is the first of its kind marrying the unique aspects of poetry with those of sequential art in this book of contemporary graphic poetry. Embodied features new work on the theme of gender, identity, and the body from 21 of America's premier award-winning cis female trans non-binary poets and adapts them into sequential art stories drawn, colored, and lettered by top cis female trans and non-binary artists with strong BIPOC and LGBTQ representation, including a Native American team. This anthology emphasizes inclusivity and the amplification of marginalized identities at a time when those identities are most under siege. Next. Among the many amazing poems that have been featured in the New Yorker and other prestigious literary journals, this anthology features Good Bones by ba Maggie Smith, a work that grapples with pain, injustice, unfairness, and disillusionment, which was published in the literary journal Waxwing just days after the Pulse nightclub shooting. Shortly thereafter, the poem went viral and has become something of a societal anxiety barometer. When something bad is happening in the world, this poem surges. A percentage, a percentage of the proceeds will benefit International Women's Health Coalition, and this is intended for teens ages 16 and up. Next. And, and that's it. That's, uh, that's what I've got this time, guys. Thank you so much. I've included my email here if you ever want to reach out with any questions or comments. Um, I do have the full Edelweiss catalog link here and our, um, our social media and uh, website. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you, Emily. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Chloe Ramos. Chloe is the Book Market and Library Sales Manager at Image Comics, where she provides resources to librarians and educators looking to utilize comics in their institutions not only as items to be acquired, but also as cues to facilitate increased patron engagement. Before joining the IMAGE team, she worked at San Francisco Public Library for seven years. Prior to SFPL, she worked in both corporate and academic libraries, including a very meaningful stint at the Diego Rivera Archives at the CCSF Rosenberg Library. In addition to her work, she is a very passionate about being a Puerto Rican feminist art nerd. Take it away, Chloe. Thank you so much. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us for a selection of some of our hottest upcoming titles in late fall and uh, through to spring. Uh, you can also find sample content of ours after this webinar on our Edelweiss pages and we offer free first issues on imagecomics.com. So let's go ahead and begin with our first title, Reckless. Reckless is the newest title from the powerhouse creative team of Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips, and Jacob Phillips. The team brings their signature style to a new crime and thriller series of standalone books starring protagonist Ethan Reckless. Ethan Reckless is happy to make your trouble his business if you can meet his price, and readers will follow his exploits against the backdrop of Los Angeles in the 1980s, a landscape fueled by a heady mix of sex, drugs, and violence. Reckless may seem like a man without fear, but when he must confront a shadow from his past, that will all be put to the test. 
This adrenaline-fueled series debut is rated M for readers 18 and up and is perfect for fans of Jack Reacher and the works of James Patterson. Audiences can expect three new standalone titles within the Reckless universe over the year 2021. Next up and beginning our new year, we have That Texas Blood. That Texas Blood is a tale of mystery, horror, and the supernatural from author Chris Condon and artist Jacob Phillips, who you may recognize from our last title, Reckless. Proving once and for all that you should just let your friends keep all that Tupperware you loaned them, our protagonist's life will be turned upside down after an explosive confrontation over a casserole dish leads him into an ever-deepening spiral of blood and treachery. This title is rated M for ages 18 and up and is perfect for fans of Fargo and No Country for Old Men. Next up, we have Chu. Author John Lehman is back with artist Dan Boltwood, and he's expanding the smash hit Eisner award-winning Chewniverse with a brand new tale of food and felonies. Fans of the previous Chu, spelled C-H-E-W, will remember Detective Tony, a cop able to get psychic impressions from the food that he eats. His sister Saffron also has a relationship with the law, albeit from a slightly different perspective. Saffron is a SIBO pars, meaning she can learn secrets from anyone she eats with. And if those secrets help her commit a few felonies here and there, well, so much the better. This food noir crime comedy will have readers hungry for more. Fans of the previous series will love seeing new adventures in a familiar world, but new readers can come on board with no knowledge of the preceding material. It is rated M for readers 18 and up and is perfect for fans of the original Chew and Farmhand. Next up, we have Universe. Universe is an Eisner nominated anthology series from Albert Montes. It found great success through the Panel Syndicate platform, and Image Comics is bringing it to print for the first time since its hit digital debut. Each of the self-contained stories connects to an overall theme of science fiction and futurism through a diverse range of topics that includes everything from corporate greed to the nature of consciousness. The title is rated M for readers 18 and up and is great for fans of Solid State and Planet Paradise. Next up, we have Dead Body Road. Dead Body Road is back from author Justin Jordan and artist Benjamin Tiesma with another adrenaline-fueled, pulse-pounding tale of revenge, family, and organized crime. This grindhouse story follows protagonist Bree Hale, a tough-as-nails vet with a past, just trying to leave all that behind. When a local crime boss calls for the death of her brother, Bree goes on a no-holds-barred rampage, proving that she'll do anything and I mean absolutely anything, for her family. This entry into the universe will be enjoyed by fans of the previous volume, but can be read as a standalone book. It's rated M and is perfect for fans of The Ride and Southern Bastards. Next, we have some historical fiction from fan favorite Alesh Kot and artists Luca Casalanguida and Heather Moore. Lost Soldiers is a book about what happens to our vets after a war is over. The story follows three aging veterans separated from the horrors of Vietnam by over 40 years, but brought together again by a new conflict in a new landscape, which will see old wounds reopen and bodies pile up. Questioning the nature of man, the nature of war, and what it means to live after taking life, Lost Soldiers is a story that is prescient and enthralling. As the book ends, fires along the border of Juarez will burn away and readers will be confronted with what remains. The title is rated M for readers 18 and up and is great for fans of The Five Bloods and Full Metal Jacket. Moving on, we have The Department of Truth. From James Tynan IV and Martin Simmons comes the perfect story for a post-truth world. I'll give you a moment to all collectively shudder about that. Uh, Cole Turner is a man who has spent his life immersing himself in the study of conspiracy theories. You would think a man like that would be ready for anything, but Turner is about to discover something that is stranger than anything he could have imagined. His discovery will test his faith and his sanity, and audiences should strap themselves in for this wild and unpredictable ride. 
Readers will dive into a world where all the weirdest and wildest corners of the internet turn out to be real and under the control of a mysterious organization named the Department of Truth. This title is rated M for ages 18 and up and is perfect for fans of The Nightly News and They Live. Next up, we have Write It In Blood. Author Rory McConville and artist Joe Palmer spin a yarn of two hitmen about to go straight until everything goes wrong. A job gone bad will put targets on their backs and Cosmo and Arthur Price will have to find a way to survive as the hunters become the hunted. Readers will love this hard-boiled tale of crime, brutality, humor, and the best laid plans. The title is rated M for audiences 18 and up and is perfect for fans of the works of Cormac McCarthy and Paris, Texas. Next, we have Stillwater. Award-winning creators Chip Zdarsky and Ramon Perez have teamed up on a tale of horror and intrigue. Stillwater is a small town. It's peaceful, bucolic, and no one ever dies, ever. What happens when the eternal life is more a curse than a gift? What mystery lies behind this unnatural state? Readers will reel as they peel back the narrative layers of this dark mystery and make their way through a creeping tale of the horrors of immortality. Stillwater is rated M for ages 18 and up and is great for fans of The Last of Us and Revival. Moving on, we have Big Girls. In Big Girls, author and artist Jason Howard finally confronts that, oh no, sorry, that was my cat. Um, in, uh, well, where was I? Uh, uh, author and artist Jason Howard finally confronts the age-old question, who would win in a fight between Godzilla and the 50-foot woman? Readers meet Ember. Her hobbies include writing poetry and cuddling up with a good book. You see, Ember's day job can be a bit stressful. As a 300 foot tall woman who is tasked with defeating men when they become city destroying monsters, she and the rest of the big girls need all the re re relaxation they can get. This title is rated M for readers 18 and up and is perfect for fans of John Wick and HBO's Girls. Next up, we have Getting It Together the newest offering from award-winning author and artist Sina Grace and newcomer artist Jenny D. Fine. This new drama slash comedy is just the slice of life story you didn't know you needed. You'll be hooked on this poignant, charming tale of how messy life can be for a 20-something year old living in the Bay, figuring out his life, just trying to steer clear of all the drama, but you know, also not. A modern day cross between Tales of the City and Friends. This title is rated M for readers 18 and up. Moving into April, we have our penultimate title, Inkblot. Inkblot comes to us from third generation comic creator, Emma Kubert and rising star, Rusty Glad. Having met and become friends at the Kubert School, the pair have crafted a magical adventure that is sure to delight YA and adult readers alike. Like all the best adventures, Inkblot begins in a library. The library is home to a thousand tomes, recording the exploits of heroes and villains alike, all written by one sorceress, a sorceress who is understandably a little tired. But when she falls asleep at her desk, an accidental ink spill conjures up a mysterious black cat imbued with powerful, unpredictable abilities. Now our reluctant heroine will have to deal with her creation who threatens to unravel all of reality and just like my cat, has no intention of following orders. This title is rated T for readers 13 and up and is perfect for fans of The Cat Returns and The Worst Witch. Our final book is Decorum. It comes to you from industry phenom Jonathan Hickman and illustrator extraordinaire Mike Huddleston. Our story takes place against a backdrop of former intergalactic colonies. These new worlds exist as a fractured network of uneasy unions and shaky alliances, constantly on the lookout for the next attack by an apocalypse-minded space-faring race of conquistadores. Our protagonist is the galaxy's most dangerous and well-mannered assassin. And she's about to cross paths with a struggling young courier, a chance meeting that will change both of their lives. I would place this as one of our best titles of 2020. 
with writing that is as ambitious as anything Hickman has put out to date uh, and an experimental, mind-blowing, daring illustration that stretches the medium to its maximum potential. The 2021 deluxe hardcover collection reflects the pride that we have in the work. Uh, Decorum is rated M for readers 18 and up, and it is perfect for fans of Ian M. Banks' culture novels, saga, and the works of Sergio Topi. That is going to be it for me. Thanks again. We hope to see you in our virtual booth at Library Con Live, where we'll be hosting a series of author and artist chats on November 5th. And don't forget to contact us with any questions, information requests, or requests to see a picture of my cat. And remember to sign up for our library resources newsletter. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much, Chloe, and thanks to your cat. Uh, we'll now hear from Sarah Anderson. Sarah is the Director of Publishing, of Publishing Sales at Viz Media. Prior to joining Viz Media, she was Client Publishing Director at Simon & Schuster UK, working with retailers and clients in the US, the UK, and Australia. Thanks for being here today, Sarah. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I want to talk about some of the Viz Media titles coming out. Some will be the, you know, for the end of this year, but the majority are for next year. Um, so we're starting off with some Pokemon titles. There will always be Pokemon. Um, there are two ongoing series, Pokemon Sun and Moon and Pokemon Adventures Black 2 and White 2. Um, these are, so the first one, Sun and Moon, is in the smaller trim size. Um, so they're slightly more, they refer to them as pamphlets, um, but they're for a slightly younger audience. And then Black 2 and White 2 is the sort of standard manga series. And then moving on to, we have another Pokemon Adventures Collector's Edition. This time is volume, uh, should actually be volume six, actually. Um, and that one collects volumes 16, 17, and 18. Apologies, the slide is incorrect here. Um, but this is more in the same format as the um, Legend of Zelda Legendary Editions. These are larger format. Um, and again, the price is incorrect as well. I'm really sorry, that should be $17.99 US. Um, moving on, please. So starting off with Shonen Jump titles, and the first one we have is Jujutsu Kaisen Volume Zero. So this is a, the one-shot pilot um, of the Jujutsu Kaisen series. It is a single volume, and it was basically the starting point for the series. This series, the anime has just started on Crunchyroll um, a couple of weekends ago, and we're already seeing a nice increase in interest, both on the um, Shonen Jump site and also on sales of the, the series as well. Um, so more to come from Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, and if you can move to the next slide, there's a few pages from the volume zero. Next slide, please. Um, and then we have My Hero Academia team up missions. Um, so there is another My Hero Academia spin off. Um, this is now the fourth, I believe. Um, but My Hero Academia continues to be so, so popular around the world. Um, and in this one, we have a team up between various different heroes. Um, so it's pairing students with pro heroes and they go on missions to learn how to use their teamwork to defeat villains. Um, this is going to be a ongoing series. I don't know yet how many volumes it will be, um, but it will definitely appeal to fans of the original series. And the next slide gives you just a few pages from there. It's always nice to see some of the pages. Um, then we move on to Viz Signature, which is more of the classic and cutting edge graphic novels. And starting off with the absolutely fabulous Junji Ito. So we have two titles coming out this season, Remina, which is a sci-fi classic, and then Love Sickness, which is the kind of more traditional Junji Ito horror titles. So Remina um, is a, a planet emerges from inside a wormhole. And of course, everybody is a little bit concerned, shall we say, as to what is, the, you know, what is going on here. There's also uh, the scientist who discovers it, names it after his own daughter. And then she rises to a huge amount of fame. Um, but then obviously there is nefarious 
intentions all the way around. It will be a one volume hardcover and it'll have a similar kind of look to the Uzumaki, Kyo and Tony editions. Um, and then we have some pages from that. And then on to Lovesickness. So this is more in the kind of traditional horror from Junji Ito. It's another short story collection. Um, and it is, uh, if you see the next couple of pages, it is beautifully, um, as with all Junji Ito illustrations, beautifully dark illustrations, almost grotesque, but also very, very beautiful. Uh, and then we have Azadora by Naoki Orosawa. So this is a new series. Um, we've got sort of dual narrative running. In 2020, a large creature is rampaging through Tokyo, destroying everything in its path. And then in the late 50s, a young girl is kidnapped. Um, and I have no idea exactly how these stories are going to coincide, but they will. Um, they're going to be in a similar format to the Monster Perfect edition. So there'll be, um, you know, nice colour pages and gatefold flaps. Um, and it's over three volumes. I'm not sure in total how many eventually. Um, but the good standard from Urasawa. Really lovely images there. Um, and then we have Assassin's Creed, Blade of Shao Jun. Um, so it's based on the Assassin's Creed Chronicles China video game. Um, and it is a two volume series. So just a short series now, um, but should appeal to anybody who is familiar at all with Assassin's Creed, the series. Um, and again, a few pages there just to give you an idea of the style. And then we move on to ZOM 100, Bucket List of the Dead. Um, this is possibly my favorite title because it's just so weird. Um, it's, you take your standard zombie apocalypse and it's raised by the fact that the main character, rather than going and fighting zombies, has decided this is the opportunity to just go and do all those things that he wanted to do, but couldn't do because he was just doing a very, very boring job. Um, it's very, very funny. My colleague Julia um, was telling me about the first volume that she'd been reading and she, she cannot get enough of it. So this one's looking really, really good. Um, we've got three volumes scheduled so far. Um, it's a very irreverent take on any kind of zombie apocalypse sort of story. And I just love that image of him there looking so delighted. Um, fighting against, the, well, not fighting against the zombies, but beating them the way he wants to. And then we move on to Shoujo Beat. So we have a new series starting, The King's Beast. This is by uh, Rei Toma, who is the creator of Dawn of the Arcana and The Water Dragon's Bride. This is actually set in the same world of Dawn of the Arcana, which has done really, really well, sold over 87,000 copies over 13 volumes. It's set in a fantasy kingdom inspired by Imperial China, um, and it's very kind of mystical and magical as well. Um, so far, this is uh, set for three volumes, but it is ongoing. Um, and it's the kind of very traditional romance and uh, fantasy from Ray Toma. And then there's another page showing the art style. And then we move on to Sublime. So this is the best of Yaoi manga to English speakers worldwide. So we start off, we've got Madk, I believe, or it could be M-A-D-K. Nobody's explained exactly how this should be pronounced to me yet. Um, but we've got a slightly unusual one here in the respect that the main character, his, weird, his kink is to eat demon's guts. So of course he decides to summon a demon to feast on. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot more to the story than that, um, and it's two volumes so far. There's also a French edition, so it demonstrates that there is some really good international appeal for it. Um, we had some very, very good reactions on social media when this was announced that we picked up this license. And if you look at the next slide, um, you can see some pages there. So again, it's quite beautiful artwork, very um, kind of lyrical in a way. Um, so yeah. That's sublime. And then we have our Viz Media, which is almost like kind of the things that don't really fit anywhere else. 
So starting off with Super Mario Manga Mania, um, this is a one volume and it is a collection of kind of all of the best Super Mario manga from Japan. Um, and yes, we are following Mario and his pals. It basically looks like the video game brought to a page. Um, you, it's, if you look at the next slide, um, it's very, very um, obviously Mario. So yeah, should be good that one. That was definitely, that's an all ages title as well, just to um, let you know about that. And then we have How to Draw Star Wars. So this is a very cute little book about, um, it's giving you an idea of how you can draw your favorite Star Wars characters. Obviously they're not gonna look exactly like they do in the movies, um, but I would argue this is going to be more fun. Obviously there's a lot happening with Star Wars uh, all over the place at the moment with um, new series on Disney Plus, ongoing series for films, um, but I just think this is a very, very cute addition to the world of Star Wars. And then we have a very unusual title for us, Tokyo Fashion, a comic book. Oh, I'm so sorry, I took these out, Frozen 2 and um, Mulan, because we don't have anything to show for them yet, so would you mind skipping over the next? Thank you. Um, so Tokyo Fashion, a comic book, basically an illustrated guide to Japanese style. Um, so if you look at the next slide, you can see it's got some ideas on how you can um, work out your outfit, accessorizing suggestions for fashion on a budget. It's basically perfect entry point to learning about Japanese fashion. Um, so yeah, very, very nice on that one. And then our final title is Askiwata, Words of Wisdom from Nintendo's Legendary CEO. So yes, this is not a graphic novel. This is not a manga title. Um, this is pretty much a business book in some respects. It is basically a collection of his words of wisdom um, that led Nintendo to be one of the greatest games companies in the world. And it's sort of hints and advice and compilation of conversations. It's about leadership, development, his philosophies. Um, it's one of those titles that is just very unusual from us, but the interest we've had on this has been incredibly strong throughout the world. Um, so yes, this is one we're really, really excited about. Um, and that is it for me. Um, if you do have any questions or comments, please do let me know. And um, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sarah. Our final presenters today will be Michelle Starrett and Lee Walton. Michelle is a digital marketing associate for IDW Publishing. Part of the social media team, she provides copy for social campaigns and trade marketing assets. When she's not writing, she's lifting. Lee is a marketing director and editor for Top Shelf Productions, an imprint of IDW Publishing. He has been representing his favorite graphic novel publisher for 13 years on projects ranging from They Call This Enemy and March to Girl Town and Johnny Boo. Based in New York, he looks forward to the return of karaoke. Thank you both for joining us today. Great to be here. Thank you. Michelle, you want to kick it off? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'll be presenting IDW's titles for today. Uh, so first up is Redbone. If you've watched the hit movie Guardians of the Galaxy, then you definitely have heard the song Come and Get Your Love. But what you may not know is that the hit band behind the song, they were also Native American civil rights pioneers. And this graphic novel tells this true story of the Native American rock bone through the civil rights movement as they have their high flying career as West Coast rock and roll pioneers. It is an own voices novel. We created this in collaboration with a co-founder of the band, uh, Pat Vegas. He, uh, together with his daughter, Frankie Vegas, uh, provide a forward and afterward for the book. So we're really excited to bring this book to readers and we'll touch on it later, but we're also excited to bring this book to readers by publishing it simultaneously in Spanish. And next. And next up, we have our uh, new queer comics anthology from uh, created in collaboration with The Nib. Uh, this is a anthology of over 30 top indie cartoonists uh, telling the history of um, gay history from the American Revolution all the way up to Stonewall and to today. And what's great about this uh, particular anthology is that because we have so many different voices in this anthology, 
we're able to present so many different queer experiences and you know there is no one way to be queer and this book is a great example of that um, recommended for uh, readers 13 and up and next up we have the Mueller report uh, if you haven't read the report yet this one may be for you uh, this is from Eisner award-winning New Yorker cartoonist Shannon Wheeler he teamed up with veteran journalist Steve Dean uh, to take the 300 plus page report and turn it into a comprehensive understandable graphic novel uh, it has everything in the report but just in a graphic novel version uh, to make it more accessible for readers it has um, Shannon Wheeler's uh, critical eye satire and it's just a great way to encourage more people to read the report. And next up we have Wellington. Um, maybe you've heard of the Duke of Wellington. He was a famous war hero from England, um, fought Napoleon, but uh, this book asked the question of what if one of England's most decorated war heroes was not only a war hero, but also had a secret life as a monster hunter. This is from Aaron Menke. He is the co-creator of the Lore Podcast, and that podcast is a great tell story about monsters and stuff, so this, in a way, is being able to tell that in graphic novel form. Uh, he also teamed up with uh, New York Times bestselling author Steve, um, New York Times bestselling author Delilah S. Dawson, and so it's a great supernatural thriller about light and dark and monsters in the shadows, and we'll be here in December. And next up we have from our imprint Yo Books. Uh, this is Invisible Men, the trailblazing black artist of comic books. And this tells the story of the hidden figures of the comics industry. Uh, it's the riveting stories of black artists who drew mostly behind the scenes of the superhero, horror, and romance comics from the early years of the industry. Called A Revelation by Publishers Weekly, this is edited by Ken Quattro and presents gorgeous illustrated work from these artists in one beautiful edition. And next up we have Dying is Easy. Uh, this is from New York Times bestselling author and co-creator of Lock and Key, Joe Hill. This is about Sid Holmes. He is a ex-cop turned stand-up comedian turned possible felon. Uh, this is a murder mystery novel uh, uh, with Martin Simmons that Hill created. And it kind of just has signature Joe Hill horror. It has jokes and it's a fun where the reader gets to kind of find out who you know, is Sid innocent or not? And it's kind of like a fun mystery where Sid finds a lot along, along the way with the reader. So this will be here in later this month. And last year we had the honor of bringing Stan Sakai's Usagi Ojimbo into the IDW publishing family. We have a new ongoing series of Stan Sakai's 35 uh, Eisner Award winning uh, Usagi Ojimbo line. Uh, so we have a new ongoing series with him. But what we're excited to also present is kind of the history of Usagi. Uh, so this is the first few stories of Usagi originally published, but they're originally published in black and white. And now we're excited to bring them in new beautiful color editions. So it's the Usagi that readers have loved for over 35 years, but now in new beautiful color editions for new readers and old readers alike. And here at IDW, we have the opportunity to partner with uh, popular culture uh, franchises and such as our Star Wars and Marvel action lines. And together these lines were able to present young readers with material of the movies and everything that they love, but in a young reader friendly format. Uh, so people are able to watch the movies and then read these um, graphic novels for readers uh, with their children. And next. And also kind of in the same vein, we're able to preserve classic comics. With our Library of American Comics imprint, we are able to present classic comics such as Little Orphan Annie, Little Joe, Dick Tracy, all the comics from newspapers loved before, now in beautiful hardcover collections for years to come. And I will turn it over to Lee for Top Shelf. Awesome, thank you, Michelle. Uh... This is Lee Walton for Top Shelf, the sort of artsy literary imprint of IDW Publishing. Next slide, please. Uh, we are so thrilled about this uh, kid's book, Cody, particularly for middle grade readers, but it's gonna skew young and old as well. It's just gorgeously watercolor painted book. I just I did a wonderful video interview with this author, Jared Cullum, that's gonna be on our website shortly. 
Uh, you can actually look at a trailer for the book just by Googling Cody graphic novel. Uh, and it's the story of a little girl who falls in love with a big bear. And uh, they are separated, unfortunately, and the book becomes the story of their journey to become reunited. Uh, the reviews have been outstanding. School Library Journal starred reviews said, uh, Cullum's rich watercolors capture the Alaskan wilderness and Seattle's urban grit with equal beauty and accuracy. It's beautifully crafted, thoughtfully paced, and sweet as can be. Ideal for reluctant and voracious readers alike. Uh, also, the start review from the Bulletin for the Center of Children's Books. Um, can't say enough things about how beautiful this book is. It will break your heart and sew it back together by the end. Uh, next slide, please. Together, we have these three new graphic novels from Australian cartoonists. So we're grouping them together as what we call the Australian Invasion from Top Shelf. Uh, first up on the left, you see Hometime Book Two. This is the sequel to a tremendously uh, acclaimed book from Campbell White. Uh, the New York Times said it was exuberant and a richly imagined world. Uh, Brian Lee O'Malley, the author of Scott Pilgrim, said it was cute, funny, scary, exciting, and cleverly constructed. Uh, it's the story of six friends who fall into a river and wake up in a magical world uh, and uh, are trying to find their way back home, although some of them may not want to leave. Uh, School Library Journal Comics for Kids said uh, Campbell White's world building is as impressive as his ambitious story and his mastery of the half dozen different artistic styles that he uses in this book. Each chapter is a totally different art style representing the perspective of a different kid. Uh, and finally, it was called an intoxicating and visually stunning Australian Narnia. So if that doesn't whet your appetite, I don't know what will. This book is incredible. Beautiful hardcover, uh, finishing up the home time saga. Uh, and it will be out in just a few days. Uh, in the middle, we have The Grot by Pat Grant. This is a story of two brothers in a sort of post-apocalyptic, filthy world of scammers and rip-off artists in a world where anyone who's willing to get filthy is also, could also possibly get filthy rich. Uh, Pat Grant has been called the Australian Mark Twain, and this is really a wonderful portrait of a stratified society uh, a, a world after a climate apocalypse, and it's a little bit too close for comfort, uh, judging how things are going outside my window. Uh, but very fun, beautiful, but also with a great message underneath. And finally on the right is Under Earth by Chris Gooch. This is the most ambitious book yet. It's almost 600 pages by a Wunderkind cartoonist. Uh, we've been publishing him for a couple of books now. The acclaim for his first book and second book were off the charts. Uh, Library Journal in a start review said he was a creator to watch. Publishers Weekly in a start review said he was devastating. And now he is really arriving. This is a book about human beings making connections, even in the most difficult of circumstances, in a massive underground prison city. Uh, so keep an eye out for Under Earth, which will be out in November. Next slide, please. Uh, you may be familiar with the kids' books of James Kachalka, especially Johnny Boo on the left, which has won an Eisner Award. Uh, and is up to volume 11 in the series, if you can believe it. Uh, James, in this volume, brings back some of our old friends from previous books, and they form a sort of Power Rangers Voltron figure. Uh, and uh, you'll also be excited that a 12th Johnny Boo book is coming in February called Johnny Boo and the Silly Blizzard, not shown here, but coming soon. School Library Journal calls this series a landmark book for the kindergarten crowd, and it's won several awards, as I mentioned, the Eisner, and many others. On the right, from the same author, we have a new series called Glork Patrol, which is an outer space adventure that's just as silly as Johnny Boo, uh, calibrated for pure young reader joy by a long-standing master of comics eccentricity, say our friends at Booklist. Uh, so both these books are newly out, and you can get them from your library today. Next, we have another book from James Kachalka. This is the return of one of his magnum opuses uh, from early in James's career, uh, which he has now fully colorized and brought back a 120 fin grand finale, uh, 120 page grand finale to make this Monkey vs. Robot the complete epic. Uh, this book sort of changed the game in graphic novels when it came out way back in the year 2000. This is the 20th anniversary. Uh, and critics said the Monkey vs. Robot books are like the best of children's literature in that they appeal to the joyfulness of literature and art that appeals so much to children, while adults can enjoy the structure and techniques. 
I have to say James's work here is impeccable cartooning with the grace and the elegance of Charles Schultz from Peanuts. Uh, and to see what he's done with these colors is truly spectacular. Uh, a a thought-provoking book and just a joy to look at. Next, we have a new expanded hardcover edition of George Takei's massive award-winning and best-selling graphic memoir, They Called Us Enemy, about his childhood growing up in the Japanese-American internment camps during World War II. Uh, this has won the Eisner Award, the Asian Pacific American Award for Literature, as you can see here, recently won the American Book Award, and the National Cartoonist Society Award for Graphic Novels. Uh, we also have a teacher's guide for using this book in the classroom, uh, developed by the Japanese American National Museum. Uh, and this new hardcover edition, great for the library shelf, also includes a 16-page bonus section with behind-the-scenes photos, commentary from George, historical documents, and much more. Next, we have another new revitalization of a classic award-winning book, winner of five Eisner Awards, winner of the International Horror Guild Award, and many, many others, From Hell by Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell, two of the greatest people to ever work in comics, uh, has now been colorized by the original artist, Eddie Campbell himself. So we have this newly available in hardcover. Uh, it's the story of Jack the Ripper and the birth of Victorian London. Coming up next, uh, what if we were, oops, sorry, you skipped one. The Book Tour uh, is a brilliant uh, story of a author uh, who goes on a book tour in which everything goes wrong. For fans of Monty Python and the Coen brothers, uh, this got a starred review from Library Journal, a hugely entertaining page turner, and uh, an award winner in Europe. We're very pleased to be bringing it to you in November. What If We Were is the story of two 17-year-old girls who are best friends and play a game of imagination uh, and have been playing it for years and gotten very good at it. But what if a new player joins their game? And what if she was really, really cute? So it's not only a celebration of friendship and imagination, but also an LGBT coming of age story uh, from Axel Lenoir, who is herself a transgender cartoonist from Montreal and very talented. Parenthesis is, uh, it's been called one of the top 10 graphic novels about illness. This is the story of a brain tumor, epilepsy, and putting your mind back together again after it has been shattered. Uh, reviews of this book in its original French edition were incredible, and we cannot wait to bring it to you in English in January. Uh, up next is just a slide that summarizes our Spanish language program here at IDW Publishing, including many top shelf books and some of the bestsellers from IDW. Redbone was mentioned earlier, They Called Ascendity with George Takei. Uh, Lock and Key, now a beloved series on Netflix, Sonic the Hedgehog, and there in the middle, uh, Red Panda and Moon Bear, a great middle grade book for kids. Next slide is our Smithsonian collaboration, which is just getting underway. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of graphic novels with the Smithsonian. If you click to the next slide, we're launching with two uh, coloring books, one of dinosaurs and one of airplanes in partnership with the National Air and Space Museum and the Museum of Natural History. And there are many more great Smithsonian books to come. And just to leave you with a little teaser here at the end, uh, we have, uh, Michelle, you wanna jump in for a second on Sleeping Beauties and Goosebumps? Yeah, we have the uh, graphic novel adaptation of Stephen King and Owen King's uh, Sleeping Beauties coming out uh, in March. And then we have Goosebumps from New York Times bestselling author, uh, Marie Gay Nijkamp. And then... And Onion Skin is the great debut from a Mexican graphic novelist, Edgar Camacho. Look for that in April. And that's it for IDW. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks. Thanks so much, Michelle and Lee. And another huge thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists who you can see here. On Monday, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit www.booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like the ones you see here. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Booklist Reader, where Booklist contributors post daily about all things books and library land. Not yet a subscriber? Pair the page-by-page -page reading experience of print with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com and lock in print, online, digital, and archive access by taking advantage of this special webinar offer to get Booklist for only $75. 
Thank you again for joining us for today's webinar, and one more thank you to our sponsors, Diamond Book Distributors, Image Comics, Viz Media, and IDW Publishing. This concludes today's webinar.